All right, so, so uh, very recently, um, uh, one of the sales guys here at Spotfire came to me with a, a use case that his customer was looking for. His customer was a major bank uh, and was uh, looking to be able to export data from a table in Spotfire into XML. And um, the use case for that would be something like uh, submitting data to regulators for whatever purposes they might have. Um, and so I figured this would be pretty, actually a relatively straightforward program, and I reached out to Ian Cook, uh, who's one of my colleagues here at Spotfire, and uh, he came up with a, an R script in probably less than an hour or so that generates valid, H, uh, valid XML uh, on the fly, and you can hook it up in such a way that it can be automatic or based on a button press, just immediately generate an XML file to, that can be put on, uh, put into any directory anywhere you want. And so I wanted to show you how to hook something like that up. Um, to do that, I'm going to have that based on something like this. We're going to select a, uh, a little peak here in a chart, and you can see um, some different, um, different bar charts here. We're going to Set, select a subset of section, uh, subset of data and say, I want to be able to export just the records that represent this out into an XML format. So to do that, if anyone's uh, particularly familiar with um, XML, the aside from just kind of the, the, the children nodes, you need the ability to have each individual row um, to have its own separate uh, name and the, or, or element. And then above that, you need a root element for the entire XML uh, table. And so, you, you know, this is, and hopefully this is getting super technical. Um, if it is a little bit over your head right now in terms of XML, I, I guarantee it'll become pretty clear pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a text area. I'm just going to call it XML Generator. Uh, it's XML Generator Settings, really. And we need to create a couple of things. We need a, um, a root element. We need a, uh, a row element. Make this, make it, make it uh, look right. Uh, we need a directory. And we need a file name. All right, so let's create those properties. root element, I'm going to call it root, um, let's go ahead and do that, create another one called row element, call it row, right. we'll create another one called I'll default to something kind of recognizable. And file name. All right. So we've got our different properties that we're going to use. To, uh, to, to output this data. Um, I can go ahead and get out of edit mode here. And um, I also want to be able to take a look at what data it is that I'm messing around with here. Um, and so in this case, I'm just going to make that match whatever the, the table is here. So this is looking at the uh, the trade monitoring, monitoring broker trade date link table and it's using marking number nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just switch to that. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and say limit this data to marking number nine. There we go. And so now if I were to click on nothing here, this should be empty. All right, good. And if I were to click on a couple of these, 
There we go. Then I should see just the records that are represented. All right, good. So now all I have to do is figure out, well, where do I want to put this file? And in this particular case, I'm going to go into my analysis files, and I've got a directory here called XML generated by tear. Call it that. I'm just going to copy it there with a slash on it. And then the file name, I'm going to call it um, uh, trade monitoring uh, investigation data. And then we'll take a look and see this uh, investigation trades. Trades. And this has what kind of like the entire set is that I'm creating. And then we'll call each one of these rows a trade, uh, trade data. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to insert a data function. I've already imported this particular data function into my environment, so I can just use it like this. And then my data table, I'm going to say are the columns from that particular table, so it's already selected, and I'm just going to select all of those columns. My root element is going to be from the root property. My row element is going to be from my row property. The file path is going to be an expression. And that expression is going to be my directory, insert as value, along with my file name insert as value. And then what I like to do is I'd like to do something like this where I uh, I append a, uh, a, a timestamp to it. So first I'll kind of put something like this, like a, just a face and then I'll do date time now. But date time now is going to return a date, and I can't really put that into a string, so I just need to turn that into a string. And then I know that date time now, having done this a couple times before I recorded the video, date time now has some characters that will um, will blow this stuff up, like slashes or uh, or colons. So I'll just do a substitute. Substitute a slash, you can know that from the date, of course, to a, um, to a dash. And then we're going to surround that by another, another substitute. There we go. Where I'm going to take a colon turn that into a, let's just also turn that into a dash. All right. And then the final thing we need to put is a dot XML, also as text. And there we go. And oh, I do remember I forgot to do one thing. I wanted to have this based on marking. And so we're going to filter this by marking, and specifically we're going to filter by the marking of whatever the visualizations are that we want to use for that marking. All right. Um, I could have this refresh automatically, which would basically make it that every time I mark anything, it would spit an XML file out with a date and timestamp. But in this case, I'm actually going to make it based on a button, which would probably be more realistic because you don't want to necessarily create an audit trail of everything you ever mark, but more like an audit trail of the things that you find particularly interesting. 
So we've done that. You can actually see here it's doing some work and no errors came back. So it probably already generated an XML file. And then with something like this, what I'd probably do is I'd just add in a text area, put it right next to the stuff that I'm going to be analyzing and marking. Uh, you know what, let's put it down here. That's probably a better way to, way, better way to lay this out. And I'll go into edit mode here. Insert an action control. Export to XML. And I'll use that data function. There we go. Remove the title bar. All right. XML generator settings. This maybe put a make it a little bit nicer. Maybe even put a background color on here because because why not? All right, and you can actually see that this has already generated a, uh, an XML file. I can open this with, say, Notepad, and there's good XML. We're going to leave this up on the screen. I'll maybe make this a little bit smaller. And the important thing is to take a look at the files here. And right now, there's one file. Um, if I were to go to another set of trades here, pick a couple of those peaks, and then pick a couple of uh, a couple of these, and press export to XML. It's going to run that script, generate that data, and if I were to open that one with with Notepad. And there you go. All right. Um, and you can note that because we put in that timestamp, every one of these files is separate. So rather than overwriting the same file over and over again, you really are kind of creating just an instance of a, a kind of an audit trail. Um, if we were, on the other hand, to do something where literally every single time we click anything, it was recorded. We could do something like this. Right, let's exit this out. Edit the properties, show the title bar. And we can go ahead and just close this. We can go to edit, data function properties, edit parameters, basically just make this refresh, refresh this function automatically. So now take a look over here every single time that anything changes, everything is going to be refreshed. So let's take a look here, find somebody who trades more often than expected, and then take a look at these giant blocks of trades. All right. So I think this is really cool, and uh, almost more importantly, uh, it falls right in line with what the, uh, the, the prospect was kind of describing. So I think this is going to be, um, you know, really useful. And it shows kind of like one of those things where just by knowing, um, just by being able to expand the functionality of Spotfire with R just a, a little bit, I mean, you know, you you can really kind of, do so much more with the with the tool. Like this, this kind of thing is the kind of thing that I think that Tableau and QuickTech just simply can't do. They can't even touch an approach like this. Right? So uh, I hope you found this useful. Let me know what else you want to see. Thanks.